So let's talk about Puritan life and justice. First of all, there is a difference between Puritans and pilgrims. A pilgrim is someone who is on a religious journey, and a Puritan is a person who is interested in the pure faith and practicing their faith in the purest form possible. So let's talk a little bit about Puritan life. Uh, pointless enjoyment was frowned upon because it distracts from thoughts of God. Any waste of resources is discouraged. So the Puritan family was the basic unit of society. The husband was in charge of his wife, and he had all of the authority. Puritan life consisted largely of farming. Both men and women contributed by planting and weeding from day to day. Even though the majority of men were ministers, their professional trade also consisted of a variety of other tasks. The women wove cloth, made candles and soap, worked in the fields, and cut wood. Prayer was a major part of their daily lives. The Puritans saw their mission as fulfilling God's plan, and hardships along the way were tests from God. The word Puritan means that followers had a pure soul and lived a good life. And one of the main beliefs of the Puritans was that if you worked hard, you'd get to heaven. So Sunday became a very special day, and most forms of work were banned. Church attendance was mandatory, and those who missed church regularly were subject to a fine. The sermon became a means of addressing town problems or concerns. The church was sometimes patrolled by a man who held a long pole. On one end was a collection of feathers to tickle the chins of men who fell asleep, and on the other end was a hard wooden knob to alert children who giggled or slept. These church services were typically very long, and sometimes were not terribly interesting if we have to keep people awake. Gentlemen, so theaters and most sports were banned, and these had been very common practices uh, in places for, that men went in Europe. Boys caught playing football on a Sunday could be whipped as a punishment, and swearing was punished by a fine, though those who kept swearing could be sent to prison. The ladies, vanity was frowned upon. The idea was that anything that showed the beauty of the body or the beauty of the outfit took away from the beauty of God. Makeup was banned in England. Puritan leaders and soldiers would roam the streets of towns and scrub off any makeup found on unsuspecting women. Two colorful dresses were also banned, and women caught doing unnecessary work on the holy day could be put in stocks simply for going on a Sunday walk unless it was going to church. It could lead to a fine. Now, the clothing was not always just brown and black like we see in these recreations on TV. Puritans actually used vegetable dyes to color an array of clothing items. Articles of clothing from dresses to hat bands could be yellow, red, green, blue, or even in the case of particularly wealthy, purple. Brightly colored clothing was seen as an expression of social status. And so was th were things like lace. So very ornate lace was considered high social standing. Most of the time when we think about early American writing, we think about very religious writing and um, sometimes we think of it as being boring for example for example there are several sermons that have been recorded in time that we attribute to our early puritan writing but it was also a time of conflict the puritans were constantly at odds with the native americans to the point that there were many raids so there was a lot of blood and a lot of guts and a lot of very gory things that were happening at the time in 1704, a band of Abnaki and Mohawk Indians attacked Deerfield, Massachusetts. They killed 39 people and took 112 people captive, including the Williams family, John, Eunice, and their five children. Abenaki and Mohawk ransacked the home of Reverend John Williams. They killed the youngest children and seized Williams, his wife, and the four eldest children. Amid the battle cries, terrified screams, and gunshots, some defenders were killed, others fled, and others hid only to die in the flames the attack, as the attackers torched the houses. So these Indian raids would, there'd be a party of Indians that would come into the English settlements and they would start killing and, and kidnapping people. And then as they left, they set the whole town on fire so that anyone was, who was left in the town would have nowhere to go. 
So in the Deerfield raid, several hundred French soldiers and their native allies staged a surprise attack on the unprepared community of Deerfield. The Native Americans were working with the French, and this is part of that French-Indian War that you learned about in history. So once people were returned to civilization, they often wrote down their stories of what it was like to be captive by the Indians. All right, the story of Eunice Kenan Sanawi. Williams. This is a very famous captive story. John Williams was the reverend and a Puritan pastor. His wife, Eunice, died and five of the Williams children were ransomed and, and eventually sent home, except for Eunice, who was six years old when she was taken. She was adopted by a Mohawk family who had lost a daughter to smallpox. And then Eunice was taken to live with the Catholic Mohawks in a small mission fort near Montreal. The family gave her a new name, so she was not called Eunice anymore. She was called Canon Sanawi, which means she who has been planted like an ash, referring to the ash tree. French authorities said Mohawks would as soon part with their hearts as the child. She would later be given the adult name of Canon Sanawi. So she stayed her entire life with the Mohawk, and Reverend John Williams tried to free her and get her back almost his entire life, and he was unsuccessful. The narrative of the captivity, sufferings, and removes of Mrs. Mary Rowlandson. So this is something that you will be reading. On February 10, 1675, Mrs. Mary Rowlandson and her children were taken by Native Americans during King Philip's War and held captain for 11 weeks. It was published nearly six years after her return, and it went through four printings in 1682 and it was considered the first American bestseller. During the attack on Lancaster, she witnessed the murder of friends and family, some stripped naked and disemboweled. Upon her capture, she traveled with her youngest child, Sarah, suffering from starvation, injury, and depression, en route to a series of Indian villages. Sarah, aged six years and five months, died en route, and Mary and her other surviving children were kept separately and sold as property until she was finally reunited with her husband after a ransom of 20 pounds was paid by a group of Boston women. 